Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're gonna to be talking about cloud storage, but not just cloud storage. This is the Boss Coin YouTube channel. We're gonna be talking about cloud storage in regards to the blockchain. Can we put cloud storage on the blockchain? What projects are trying to do this? And well, how far have they gotten? Is it even possible? Hey, <laughs> or maybe we should put some balls on the blockchain. Huh? Balls on the blockchain. I don't know if I like the way that sounds. Well, I guess she's just gonna continue to stand here like this. When I think of cloud storage on the blockchain, the first project that comes to mind is one that we have covered extensively when it comes to mining, but we haven't actually talked about their cloud storage aspect much, and that would be Sidecoin. And whether you love or you hate Sidecoin and all of the mining debacle behind it, such as the Antminer A3, how it was super profitable when it came out, and then they forked those miners away and they protected Obelisk, which they have a vested interest in. So they basically made ASIC miners for their own network. You know, it's, a, it's a whole thing. All that drama aside though, one, those miners are still pretty profitable if you saw our reviews on them you know over the last couple months but two they are still not really a go-to source for cloud storage and they still have a lot of limitations and drawbacks especially for a project that is as old as they are in comparison with basically the oldest and leading provider of cloud storage on the blockchain whether or not of how far along they actually are we're going to compare that with opacity which is launching their cloud storage platform over the next month they are also the sponsor of this video to be fully transparent but that doesn't mean i'm just gonna pick them we're gonna evaluate it you know from top to bottom like we always do here on the channel guys first off let's look at saya so they build their storage platform whether you want to be a renter or a host so a renter would mean you are renting that cloud storage you know say i want to put my photo album on the cloud storage, make sure my house doesn't burn down. I lose all my precious photos, right? So I wanna rent that storage. I could do that, you know, on Google Cloud, I could do it on Amazon or whatever, but you know, we wanna use the blockchain because we're crypto guys. And since we're in crypto, everything's crypto. I mean, we, we got crypto hats. I mean, th this is a Volcom shirt, but it looks pretty close to Ethereum. I get everything's crypto guys, all right. So we're gonna use blockchain. And again, this is built into their wallet. And when you go and you set this up, it's pretty simple. You're just gonna set it up and you're gonna upload. When you do that, you're going to do a contract of about 500 Sia coin and you're only charged for what you actually end up spending, but all of it is locked for the duration of your contract. The actual amount of Sia coin it's gonna cost to store your data on the blockchain will vary. And it's about two dollars per terabyte i mean this is going to vary it seems like when they move forward in these versions they are reducing the prices so you can see when they're using 1.3.1 it was costing you know maybe four dollars to store that first terabyte on the blockchain but now with version 1.3.4 in uh, october of 2018 that same amount of data cost you know about a quarter of that. If we compare this with Opacity, they're stating that their one terabyte storage plan, which is not available yet to be very, very clear, and Sidecoin is, but it's gonna be 15.65 OPK, also known as Opacity. And what does that come out to though? So that's gonna be about 70 cents USD based on this coin's uh, current valuation. My understanding in the near term is they don't plan to change this number. So basically if you're buying in now, you're buying it at a much cheaper rate then you know if this coin goes up in value which it has gone up pretty largely over the last 30 days of 110 percent if you're wondering about daily trading volume i mean it's doing pretty decent volume of about 120k that's on qcoin uh just for reference uh, trading against the bitcoin so this is off their website so obviously it's going to look good and be in their favor but basically 100 gigabytes is going to cost about two cents per a March valuation of opacity, right? Well, we're talking terabytes, you know, for the duration of this video. So we upgrade that to a terabyte, that's about 24 cents, which is much cheaper than Sidecoin. But opacity is an idea. Sidecoin is actually functional. It's not, you know, perfect by any means, but it is functional. Here's uh, some of the things to keep in mind, some limitations that 
uh, Sidecoin has run into just for reference. We'll call this obstacles to actually putting storage on the blockchain. So right now they have an atomic file size. So no matter what your file size is, well, if you're uploading a five megabyte song, this it's gonna have to be increased to 40 megabytes for them to store it on the blockchain. So if you're putting 100 megabytes of these uh, these files and they're all separate, they're not in some kind of zip or anything, it's gonna take, you're gonna be charged. So it's gonna take up and you're gonna be charged for 800 megabytes of storage. Also keep in mind is that Psy uses a redundancy factor, which means that Psy splits your files across 30 hosts for a three times redundancy and only 10 pieces of file are needed to reconstruct it. So thus you have that triple redundancy. Having some redundancy is absolutely critical because if you use cloud storage and one of the hosts fails and like I could go become a host and you know, say my house blows up, you know, damn terrorists. Well, they blew my house up and now not only am I blown up, you know, tails got blown up, but also your files got blown up. And if you didn't have any redundancy going on, well, like, see you later, man. You just lost all your stuff and it kind of defeated the entire purpose of everything that you did with backing up your data here on the blockchain cloud. As far as the redundancy that's planned for opacity, basically, if this is pulled from their white paper and this is not a, an official, you know, 1.0 published version, just for reference, but transactions are propagated throughout a network of nodes that have mutually peered with each other. While each node maintains a redundant copy of the transaction, this th leads to a significant redundancy of data copies which heavily mitigates the risk of data loss while not relying on a centralized hosting provider so this is the only mention of uh, redundancy ultimately here we're going to really need to see this in action to verify that you know we are having uh, backups put in place and that there is a you know a, a safety net for this data on the blockchain Here's some key issues I found with putting data on the blockchain, and this is going to apply not only to Opacity, but also to Sciacoin. Subscription payments are not integrated. I'm not a fan of subscription payments by any mean, but apparently the world is because they are just absolutely everywhere. So long story short, Opacity is not going to have the capability for subscription payments anytime soon, and neither does Sciacoin. Again, you're gonna be paying with that set amount of Sciacoin and you know going on a sliding scale with your contract from there. In addition to that, streaming challenges. What if you have, you know, say a video on this cloud storage and you want to watch it, but you don't want to download it to watch it because you also have to pay, um, you know, you're using up data when you're downloading things. So but you want to watch it. And that's just not going to be possible because your data is broken up into chunks. Thus, you would have to watch each individual chunk and it's just, it's just not happening. And while this is taken from the, uh, Opacity white paper, you're also not gonna be streaming data off the Sidecoin network right now either. Immutable files. So due to the storage medium and breaking it into a bunch of chunks, this create this also not only a difficulty in streaming, but it's also a difficulty for editing. So let's take my Mega NZ for example, which if you've been following the channel, you know I put all kinds of mining files up there. Well, let's say I wanted to make an adjustment to say like this Grin Miner, which is an obsolete one now just for reference. But let's say I wanted to make an adjustment to it, right? So maybe I wanted to just update the readme and I want to disturb the whole file. I can simply delete this and upload a new version right here and you know I can have this edited right here in this folder. It's very, you know, intuitive. I can even come in here and you know say I'll go to rename and I could rename this, you know, instead of start, we could have finish.bat and it's going to adjust right there real time and next the next person who downloads this file they're going to get the file with the finish.bat in it instead of the start.bat. And my point is just that it's not a big deal renaming your file in that regard, but it could matter to you. You can adjust your stuff on the fly, but you know the comparison here is that this is a centralized hosting provider. Okay, so they go down, see your files, you're gone. If you know, ideally, if it's implemented properly, storage on the blockchain, it goes down. Well, you've got other hosts. Okay, and you're not relying on a centralized data provider that could take your data, that could lose your data, that could just go down and you no longer have access to your data. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of projects have interesting things happen over the course of their lifespan, like Sidecoin and the whole mining debacle and Obelisk and making their own ASIC miners and so forth. Well, that's basically the main drama piece with Sidecoin over the last couple of years. It's crazy, it's already been almost a couple of years now. When it comes to opacity, which is actually a fork of the Oyster protocol, which was an ICO, 
<laughs> there's a little bit of drama back here. Diving into this ocean of uh, interesting material, it basically, in my research, comes down to one thing. There were issues with the smart contract, essentially that it was not set up properly, that additional coins could be minted if desired, and the Ethereum sent to that in exchange for the ICO could be taken right out, and they can sell it for higher on Qcoin. Um, you know, that's, that's really the issue that's going on here. And this all stems back to a man by the name of Bruno Block. And when you start to look into this, they, they get a lot of negative flack and it really kind of all boils back to him. You can see things like Bruno literally screwed everyone over. There needs to be some follow-up data and illustration on this. Just to give you some more insight on this, I'm not gonna clog up the whole video with this drama, but basically Bruno really jacked this project up. You can see his messages here. He calls crypto an entire giant Ponzi scheme. And he says, to be clear, insider trading doesn't exist in this market. And if that's the case, I mean, this is clearly a guy we want to stay far away from and everything he's involved in. And to be clear, he is not and has never been involved in the actual opacity project. That's pretty much why they forked the damage control to try to basically reboot their project. If we click over here to coin market cap and go in the search bar, Oyster slash Pearl doesn't even exist anymore as far as uh, coin market cap is concerned. Opacity is here, ranking it at 538 by market cap. Again, it's recently gone up pretty significantly in price, and the volume has increased pretty substantially lately behind that. In comparison with this, we go to Sia Coin, which is ranked number 57, and they are doing a million and a half of volume over the last 24 hours. Unfortunately, as uh, pretty much every miner knows, that their price has been steadily declining over the last year, and it's showing, I mean, really it's showing no sign of rebounding. I mean, th this is a total decline, flat line. That's unfortunate, but due to their infinite supply, it's an absolutely inflationary currency uh, by all means. Basically, at the end of the day, we have a more of an OG cryptocurrency trying to put storage on the blockchain. That's obviously SciCoin. We also have Opacity, who's looking to step up to the plate, and they launch in May. Opacity 1.0, you know, their launch date is May. That's next month. So I'm always really curious to see a project actually launch. You know, we're going to see a delay. Will they actually work? Are they going to be an awesome solution? Will they challenge? Sidecoin here will they bring something new to the table or will they be a total flop? I don't know, but I don't like investing in things until I see you know some real proofs until I can see them actually storing some things on the blockchain. I know they've got some kind of beta going on, but anyway, I digress. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you some insight on just you know what's going on with uh, storage on the blockchain because I know this is just a, a popular question. It, it seems to be one of the things it's like, why can't we store things on the blockchain or why aren't more people or projects doing this? So, hey, here's a little bit of insight on that. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up. Please leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about Sai, what you think about Opacity, or another project you think is doing the same thing. I'll see you next time. I just want to be with you. Yeah, I just want to be with you. I just want to dance all night. Forget my problems at my Now you know